When it comes to weight loss, the journey often begins with a maze of questions. But today, we are tackling the hardest of them all. To count or not to count. Hello, my dears, and welcome. I'm Marina, a registered dietitian with a passion for guiding others on their weight loss journey. Having lost 80 pounds myself, I know firsthand the confusion surrounding calories and calories counting. Die, calories, die! But no more confusion, because today we are answering every question about calorie counting. And whether you count them or not, when it comes to weight loss, calories do count. Calories, 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 calories. Let's start by defining what a calorie is. It's a unit of energy. Its scientific definition can be really confusing. One calorie equals the amount of heat needed to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius. I know. But to better grasp this, scientists utilize a tool called the bomb calorimeter, which measures the energy content of food by burning it in controlled condition. That's how we determine the calorie content of different foods. Now, in everyday use, calories refer to the energy we obtain from consuming food. When we count calories for weight management, we are essentially monitoring the energy intakes from the foods we consume. For weight loss to occur, we need to be in a calorie deficit, meaning consuming fewer calories than our bodies need. This calorie deficit prompts our bodies to access stored energy reserves primarily in the form of fat to meet its energy needs. This energy balance principle is often called SECO or calories in and calories out. Calories in are straightforward, what we eat and drink, while calories out involve various dynamic factors such as our basal metabolic rate, non-exercise activity, actual exercise activity, and the thermic effect of food. While SECO and counting calories are related concepts, they are not identical. Look the same, not the same thing. SECO is a simplification of the concept of energy balance in the context of weight management, but it does not delve into the specifics on how one tracks or manages their calorie intake and expenditure. Counting calories, on the other hand, is a specific method for implementing the SECO principle. Additionally, calorie is a calorie. It's a unit of energy. 100 calories from apple or 100 calories from chocolate, the number of calories is the same. But what's not the same is how those calories will be metabolized in our bodies and their different impact on our satiety, energy levels and overall health. So even when we talk about calories and calorie deficit as the main character in weight loss process, Diet quality is equally important because it will actually help us to stay in a calorie deficit and healthy. Despite all of these complexities, estimation of both calorie intake and expenditure can be sufficient for achieving a calorie deficit. Determining the right calorie deficit for weight loss involves understanding our individual energy requirements. On average, an adult may require around 2,000 to 2,500 calories per day for maintenance. However, this varies based on factors like age, gender, activity level, and metabolism. Fortunately, calorie calculators are available to estimate our daily calorie needs for weight maintenance. A common approach is to aim for a deficit of around 10 to 20% of maintenance calories, which equates to approximately 300 to 500 calories fewer per day. For most, it's better to start with a moderate calorie deficit and adjust as needed through the process. As you lose weight, you may need to further reduce your calorie intake to maintain the deficit. 
When approaching weight loss, it's essential to recognize that it is as much a behavioral process as it is about diet and exercise. Instead of solely focusing on specific diets or exercise regimens, it's important to address and modify our behaviors and habits surrounding food and activity. To effectively change our behavior, we need strategies such as goal setting and self-monitoring. Self-monitoring involves actively recording our dietary intake and physical activity to enhance awareness of our current behaviors, allowing us to identify areas for improvement. Calorie counting is a prime example of self-monitoring, particularly when it comes to managing energy intake and sustaining a calorie deficit for weight loss. By tracking the number of calories consumed and expended, we can gain valuable insight into our eating habits and activity levels, empowering us to make more informed choices and adjustments to achieve our weight loss goals. However, tracking heavily relies on individual awareness and honesty, as people are really bad at estimating how much they eat. Is butter a carb? This can lead to discrepancies between recorded and actual consumption, impacting the effectiveness of calorie counting. Also, there are other several factors that affect the efficiency of self-monitoring, such as consistency and frequency of self-monitoring. Increase in consistency with combination of high frequency yields better weight loss outcomes. Traditionally, dietary self-monitoring involved manually recording all daily food and beverage intake onto paper logs. This method required participants to look up nutrient and energy content and calculate total daily energy intake. While really hard work, but effective, it felt out of favor with the advent of other diet strategies and more holistic approach to nutrition. However, with the rise of diet tracking apps and the emergence of smartwatches and variables, calorie counting is making a comeback. Calories, 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 calories. These modernized techniques have evolved to offer easier monitoring on platforms like mobile apps and websites such as MyFitnessPal and Chronometer. And although tedious process, self-monitoring is the cornerstone of successful behavior therapy. Monitoring food and activity levels directly increases self-awareness of personal behaviors and slow down the decision-making processes, allowing us time to make healthier choices. It also alerts us about overconsumption and the nutritional content of foods. A 2016 meta-analysis showed that weight loss intervention participants who had greater adherence to dietary self-monitoring lost more weight, thus improvement in monitoring may drive better weight loss outcomes. Evidence has also shown smartphone application for self-monitoring dietary intake and physical activity are effective at supporting weight loss goals and promoting adherence to tracking protocols. However, it's important to remember that calorie counting is just one tool in a toolbox of weight loss strategies. It's not a specific diet or a magic solution to the complex issue of obesity. While it can be incredibly helpful for many individuals, it's crucial to approach calorie counting as a part of comprehensive and balanced approach to weight management, incorporating other healthy behaviors such as focusing on whole foods, mindful eating, regular physical activity, and stress management. And lastly, for most individuals, Calorie counting should not be a lifelong practice, but rather a tool to be utilized for a specific period to achieve their weight management goals.
By viewing calorie counting as a tool rather than a strict regimen, we can harness its benefits while also maintaining a flexible and sustainable approach to weight loss. Calorie counting offers numerous benefits for weight management. Firstly, it increases awareness of food choices and portion sizes, helping us make more informed decisions about our diet. By tracking calories, we gain insight into the energy content of different foods, which can encourage mindful eating habits and promote healthier choices. It can indeed be very educational to learn that one tablespoon of peanut butter has 100 to 120 calories, which is about the same as two eggs. Additionally, calorie counting provides flexibility in food choices and dietary preferences, allowing us to incorporate a variety of foods into our diet while still managing calorie intake. While calories are the king, nutrients are the queen, so it is important to emphasize a whole foods diet rich in vegetables, fruits, lean proteins, whole grains, and heart-healthy fats in moderate portions. With that in mind, calorie counting can further enhance the 80-20 rule where 80% of calories come from nutrient-dense whole foods and 20% from indulgent fun food choices. Tracking those fun calories help us maintain moderation and staying in a caloric deficit while enjoying all foods. And this approach can also help with overcoming that black and white thinking about foods where certain foods are perceived as either good or bad. By focusing on overall calorie intake and nutritional balance, rather than labeling foods as inherently good or bad, which they're not, we can develop a healthier relationship with food and reduce feelings or guilt or shame associated with indulgent choices. For example, while enjoying a slice of cake is not bad, it's important to recognize that it's high calorie food. By counting calories, we can include treats like this in our overall calorie limit so we don't need to eliminate them but can still enjoy them in smaller amounts and less often. In connection, calorie counting can be viewed similarly to budgeting your finances. You set a budget for your money just as you set a budget for your calorie intake. And as overspending can lead to financial trouble, Overeating can lead to weight gain. Well, I am poor. Same as you don't need to track every cent, you don't need to track every breadcrumb, but a rough idea of what you are consuming and spending can help making smart choices without feeling restricted. Calorie counting can also allow versatility, which is particularly beneficial for those with specific dietary preferences or restrictions, such as vegetarians, vegans, and others. A vegan, a gluten-free vegan. Furthermore, calorie counting with the help of mobile apps can support portion control by providing some guidelines for appropriate serving sizes, helping us avoid overeating. It also allows for customization to individual needs and preferences, making it adaptable to different dietary goals and lifestyles. Moreover, calorie counting fosters a sense of accountability. Accountability is vital for effective weight management, motivating people to take control of their eating habits and make healthier choices. Tracking calories provides direct feedback on how food choices affect overall calorie balance, boosting motivation to stick to weight loss goals. This accountability also enhances self-efficiency. Self-efficiency stands for belief in one's ability to achieve weight loss goals and is consistently associated with greater success in adhering to dietary and exercise plans, making it a significant predictor for weight loss outcome. So, if you believe it, 
you can achieve it. Do it! Just do it! Additionally, calorie counting is rooted in basic principles of energy balance and self-regulation theory, which posits that self-monitoring precedes self-evaluation of progress made toward one's goals and self-reinforcement for the progress made. For instance, someone tracking their daily calories to lose weight might feel good about themselves if they meet their calorie target for the day. They might reward themselves by acknowledging their success or doing something enjoyable like going for a walk or watching their favorite TV show. Overall, calorie counting is a versatile and effective tool supported by scientific evidence for weight management. It can encourage balanced nutrition, behavior change and long-term weight maintenance. But again, it's not a magic solution or singular strategy for a healthy diet. While helpful for many, it may not be suitable for everyone as there are potential drawbacks associated with it. Let's look at the cons. Calorie counting comes with its share of drawbacks that warrant consideration. One significant limitation is that focusing solely on calorie intake does not account for the overall quality of the diet. Simply meeting a calorie target does not guarantee a balanced intake of essential nutrients or promote feelings of satiety which are crucial for overall health and well-being. Additional to overall calorie intake, you should ensure proper, higher intake of protein-rich foods, vegetables and fruits in addition to whole grains and heart-healthy fats in moderate portions. Also, don't forget leaving some calorie budget for occasional higher calorie fun foods. Furthermore, relying on nutrition labels for calorie information may not always provide accurate data. According to the FDA guidelines, these labels can be up to 20% inaccurate. A few calories here or there shouldn't make much difference, but for higher calorie foods or foods you eat a lot of, this could affect your weight loss. But of course, this doesn't have to stop you from counting calories, but bear in mind that it isn't as precise as you might think and it doesn't have to be. Calorie deficit targets don't need to be specific number, but can instead be approached as a range. On certain days, your calorie deficit can be higher, on some lower, and even a diet break at maintenance or a bit higher calories once in a while is a smart idea. Another not so fun aspect of calorie counting is that the process itself can be challenging and time consuming. Keeping track of your food intakes requires dedication and consistency as you'll need to allocate time to log every meal and snack consumed throughout the day. Estimating portion sizes accurately can also be challenging, particularly when dining out or preparing homemade meals with multiple ingredients. Additionally, some people may find it necessary to meticulously weigh or measure their food to ensure accuracy, further adding to the time investment required. As a result, calorie counting can become a time-consuming task that requires careful planning and organization, potentially adding stress to an already busy lifestyle. Constantly tracking food intake and calculating calorie totals can indeed become burden, often leading to feelings of frustration and distress. Math is hard. Studies by Burke and colleagues, as well as other researchers, have shown that adherence to self-monitoring, regardless of the methods used, tend to be highest in the second week, but steadily declines over time. This decline in adherence may be attributed to various factors, including fatigue from the repetitive nature of calorie counting, competing priorities in daily life, or simply the difficulty of sustaining a new habit over long term. 
As people encounter obstacles or experience diminishing motivation, they may find it increasingly challenging to maintain consistent and accurate food tracking practices. Moreover, for some people, particularly those with a history of ED or predisposed to obsessive tendencies, calorie counting can exaggerate unhealthy behaviors and trigger negative psychological responses. Research has shown that regular calorie tracking is associated with increased levels of eating concern and dietary restraint. Some people may find themselves overly fixated on numbers, leading to an unhealthy relationship with food and potential relapse into disordered eating patterns. Therefore, if you find yourself in these situations, it may be advisable to refrain from counting calories. You should stop. Additionally, if you begin calorie counting and find that it negatively impacts your mental health or becomes burdensome, it's important to prioritize your well-being and discontinue the practice. Your mental and emotional health should always take precedence over any weight management strategy. In conclusion, Calorie counting stands as a valuable tool for weight management, offering structure, awareness, and accountability. It really does. However, it is essential to recognize its limitations, such as overlooking diet quality, the potential for imprecise calorie information, and its time-consuming nature. For some individuals, the process may be challenging or distressing, highlighting the importance of considering alternative approaches like portion control and meal planning with an emphasis on whole food diets. Counting or not counting, you should choose a diet and approach that is the easiest to sustain long term. After all, adherence to dietary choices is the best predictor of long-term success in weight management. My diet starts tomorrow! Ultimately, finding a balanced approach that suits your needs and prioritizes both physical and mental well-being is key to achieving and maintaining a healthy weight. No matter the approach you choose, we wish you all the best on your weight loss journey. Remember, patience and consistency are key, so take it one day at a time. If you found this video helpful, make it count with your likes and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Thank you for watching, my dear, and remember to make each day count. To make it count. Bye.